Hi, my name's Raph Koster, and I'm probably best known for doing MMOs like Ultimate Online, Cyborg Galaxy, and I was asked to show you my first game. I lived overseas as a kid. Uh, arcades were really rare, but I loved video games. So I used to port my favorite arcade games to board games, because otherwise I couldn't play them at home. Like this one. It wasn't very successful. Make, marking all the little squares with little bits of paper that blew away was pretty fiddly. Eventually, it led me to want to make my own game. I branded my little paper game company Super Game, and I would sell copies to other kids during recess. Check it out. This one was so popular in 8th grade that I claimed it was already a classic in the magic market. So I started to beg my mom for a computer, and eventually my brother and I got one as a gift from my great uncle. It was an Atari 600 XL, which was eventually upgraded to a 130 XE. This one. I still have it in working condition. I, of course, immediately went nuts playing games on it. The classics like Archon and Mule and the Infocom text adventures. But I also started to learn how to program. I was 14, and I did it out of books like these. Check out the introduction. Written by a certain science fiction writer before he was famous. And typing and listening to magazines, which are also pretty hard to come by overseas. With this, I taught myself basic and eventually a little bit of 6502 machine language, which I have completely forgotten. That led to my first game, which we're going to boot up right now. Some friends and I started a little fake game company called Protocon. You can tell we were serious because we stuck copyright symbols on everything, because we thought that was important. We sold games in Ziploc baggies with homemade labels because we'd heard that Richard Garriott got his start with Ultima that way. Who knew then that I would be working with him 10 years later? We had a cassette deck that we loaded games from before we had a disk drive. You could make the tape start to play anytime from code, which is why we had Van Halen's 1984 for the soundtrack. This loading screen is insanely slow, so I'm going to let the video speed up. But it originally ran long enough so that you could hear the whole song, and then it would go into jump for the first match. It wasn't slow because it was doing anything. It was slow because computers were slow. This game ran in like 8K of memory and was written all in basic on a 1.79 megahertz machine. The first game I made was a clone of Tron's Light Cycle, because I couldn't clone anything else. It would have been too hard. Light Cycles is pretty easy. There's a big lesson there. There's no shame in starting out cloning stuff. You learn a lot that way. Just don't stick with it your whole career. And this wasn't actually one program. It was six of them, each of them loaded from disk while the victory screen played. All of them were two-player because I had no idea how to write an AI. In the second game, I tried having a ship on screen. They were stuck at the edges because I didn't know how to do collision detection. <laughs> but they were. I could check they were at the same height, so that way I could tell when the shots hit each other. And the explosion animation really sucks. By the third one, you can see the ships moving, but they flicker because I was erasing and redrawing them every frame. Yeah, that flicker is the game's frame rate. But when you shoot, everything stops because I didn't know how to make shots move independently of the main loop yet. At least the explosion is working now. Then I had a brilliant idea. Why not adapt the playground game of Capture the Flag? I probably should have patented that. Oh well. I was used to doing games where the two players had different capabilities because in all the board game adaptations, one player always had to play the computer while the other guy got to play keyboard. This was also the first game I ever did procedural map generation on, which is still a go-to tool for me today. By the fifth game, I'd learned how to replace the character set with custom graphics. So here we have an early deathmatch of the maze. This actually has a bug in it. You can end up with a starting map that traps you in the corner. You had to reset the machine to deal with it because there was no way to break through the walls. So at 14, I made all of the art and all of the music, except for jump, all of the sound, all of the graphics, all of the coding. And believe it or not, we played Orion for months. In retrospect, it foreshadows a lot of my career on the MMOs with UO and Galaxy. Multiplayer games full of PvP, Way too many games stuffed into one box. Insane technical overreaching, trying to do things that I shouldn't have been trying to do. Tons and tons of bugs. A lot more fun than they really deserve to be. The biggest thing that it taught me is that even at 14, it can be done. Right? We sold one copy. I consider it highly technical.